Have you heard of international goals to become carbon neutral? Or maybe you've heard of a goal to reduce carbon dioxide emission? If you've heard of them, you probably know that these goals are put in place to counteract climate change. But what does carbon dioxide actually have to do with it? Are concentration of carbon dioxide and temperature on Earth's surface even connected? And if yes, could it explain the recent rise in the temperature? First, let's look at the data from the past. There is no time machine, but the ice from polar caps comes as close as it gets. Analysis of ice samples can give information about temperatures and air composition on Earth up to 800,000 years ago. Temperatures in the past fluctuated quite a bit, but present temperatures are the highest in the last 120,000 years. Changes in temperature in the past were accompanied by changes in carbon dioxide concentration. You can see that the two curves overlap pretty well. Note that recently the concentration is peaked beyond anything that was seen before. Can the increase in carbon dioxide concentration cause temperature increase? To test this, we can use a set of simple household items. Two hermetic tubes with thermometers, a vacuum pump, and a few cylinders with different gases. The first tube we'll leave as is. From the second one, we we'll remove air using the pump and replace it with one of the gases. Then, we place both tubes next to each other on a sandy window seal and check how the temperature changes. The more heat the tube traps, the hotter it gets. This experiment is similar to what Eunice Foote did in the middle of 19th century. Foote noticed that a tube with carbon dioxide was getting hotter than the tubes with air, oxygen or hydrogen. She wrote, The receiver containing this gas became itself much heated, very sensibly more so than the other, and on being removed from the sun, it was many times as long in cooling. This was the first hint that the composition of gases in the atmosphere can influence temperature on Earth. Five years later, an Irish physicist, John Thindall, used a slightly more complicated setup. He showed that gases can trap heat rays and developed the equations to describe that. Among all known atmospheric gases, carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor were the most efficient in trapping heat waves. His work showed that even traces of carbon dioxide or methane could strongly affect the transmission of heat, and this effect is now known as the greenhouse effect. If carbon dioxide traps heat and its concentration in the atmosphere is the highest since the last 800,000 years, can it explain the recent temperature change? Data shows that since the pre-industrial time, the temperature has risen about 1 degree Celsius, likely between 0.8 degrees Celsius and 1.2. And the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has risen from 280 parts per million to about 415 parts per million. We can use a formula developed by Svante Arrhenius to show how much heat will be trapped by this increase in carbon dioxide. Changing the trap heat is equal to the natural logarithm of the ratio between carbon dioxide concentration now and then, multiplied by 5.35. By using this formula we calculate that 2.09 Watt per square meter of heat is getting trapped by carbon dioxide alone. This directly translates into a temperature increase, as temperature change is equal to the change in the trapped heat multiplied by 0.8, and results in a temperature increase of 1.67 degrees Celsius, which is more than we observe. However, these calculations take only two parameters into account, carbon dioxide concentration and temperature. Another important factor is aerosols that scatter incoming solar radiation and have a cooling effect. The exact magnitude of this is unclear, but it is estimated at 1 watt per square meter. If we correct our delta F from 2.09 to 1.09 to account for this effect, we will land on 0.87 degrees of warming. These calculations match the observed warming between 0.8 to 1.2 degrees from the pre-industrial era. So, the increase of carbon dioxide concentration in the air is able to explain the current warming. There are even more factors in play that can influence the climate. Other greenhouse gases, water vapor, cloud radiation, ocean circulation, ice albedo, and so on and so forth. There are different computer models in place that estimate the contribution of these factors, but all of them generally agree 
that the main factor for driving temperature higher is greenhouse gases, while other factors only provide minor corrections. So, there we have it. Carbon dioxide concentrations and Earth temperatures seem to be connected. Experiments show that greenhouse gases trap heat and increase the temperature on the surface. Theory and computer modeling help quantify this effect. Taken together, these points show that the increase in greenhouse gases alone is able to explain the unusual temperature increase we are seeing now. That's it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell button if you want to be notified about the future videos where we'll continue investigating different aspects of climate change.